Welcome, young and old, to the Mod Draft Live. It's our second year doing this. And probably one of the few bits of draft content that hasn't been recycled and copied and pasted because it's still the original. We've got an extra guest this time. It's going to get bigger. The dream is year 2030. We have 18, which will be quality. But I'm Pom. Um, below me, in the geographical sense of the word, not in the social sense of the words, are uh, firstly, like dog, Mr. Movember. How are you doing? You've got one hell of a moustache on the go, my friend. Mate, yeah, no, doing well. And I've only been growing it for a little over a week because I, I, I mowed, I shaved late because I had wedding photos I had to be in. Uh, it's going all right if you want to donate. I'll drop the link in chat later on. Uh, we're almost at the goal for the year, which was a thousand bucks. I'm trying to be healthy, which I'm relatively successful at. But no, look, life's life's good, Pommy. And this show's always fun. I know we've only done it once, but it's always fun, and it's going to be fun again this year. I've got to say, this is the first time, Let Dog, in our beautiful relationship. I haven't muted you in uh, November. Usually, I mute you. <laughs> yeah, I've been very lazy this year. I've been very. <laughs> Um, but ne next, a first timer to the draft live, the legend, the, the super cool coach guru himself. Um, been watching his cricket content because I dabble in a bit of BBL. So make sure you subscribe to Damo SC. Big Damo, how are you doing all the way from Frio? You've got the rivals this week. I think I've been stitched up getting West Coast, to be honest. Um, I don't know what hat you drew this out of, but I'm glad to be here. It, I've got to say, it was a randomised draw. I had no involvement. It yeah, was, sure, um... random, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and returning, Mr. Draft himself, horse to the Navy Blue Corner, the only one who's loyal to the Navy Blue Corner and actually treats it as a podcast, not a means for a holiday, the wonderful <laughs> Ian. Ian, how are you doing? Oh, very good, very good. Yeah, my partner in crime, Lockie, is actually back uh, next week, about time. The guy is always on holidays, but no, very keen to jump into the mock draft. It's, I've been, I feel like I've been stitched up because I've got Frio, so the pressure's now on me to not embarrass myself in front of Damo. Um, but no, very, very keen to get into it. Uh, I think I've got a stage in the first round, three teams back to back to back, and they've all pretty much got the same player that we all want to target. So I'm just pretty much as taking the players for myself so it's not going to be good i'm stitching myself up mate it's always good to be able to manipulate the draft i mean for for those who are joining us for the first time basically we replicate the afl draft so for those who have ever tried to do a mock draft it's really easy trust me i've done a few of them it's easy to cheat so mm. you convince yourself pick eight is someone and you manipulate the draft with reasoning to get him to number eight mm. because you're confident it's a lot harder when you've got three people trying to dick you all the time. So basically, pretty straightforward. There is live trades. There is a bit of banter. Probably someone's going to be a dickhead and ruin the draft by taking players because they've got some intel on what someone else is taking. But that being said, Damo, you have the hardest pick of them all. Pick one. And you're a rival. Am I on the clock? Mate, yeah. You, you can sex this up if you want. Ask for a trade. Does look does, if, out, of in, out of interest, is any of the other boys trying to trade in for this one? You know I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I've done very little. Pre if if, if you, Melbourne couldn't get 6-11 and a future first across the line for pick one, I'm not going to try and trade in fake in fake footy. Look, if, if you asked me which player... Do West Coast need the most out of what their list looks like at the moment? And this guy even supported them as a kid. I would say Jed Walter, but because there's a medal and a grant prize money and all that sort of thing involved, I think West Coast would prefer the fanfare of picking Harley Reid. So number one, they're picking Harley Reid. Well, there it is. I mean, that was, you, you never know, Jarbaid. I mean, it would have been funny if we hadn't done it. Let's get Harley Reid over here. We're going to have to do this for the sake of this, but Harley Reid? Damo was go. telling me, we were talking throughout the week, and he, he told me uh, he had... Uh, it's hard because West Coast need to take the best player available with every pick because they're so bad. And Damo, <laughs> that was very easy, mate. <laughs> 
It's, it is. Hey, it, it's going to get harder. <laughs> it is, well, I mean, it, it's the much debated one, but pick two, North Melbourne, here I come. Um, I'm going to hope this happens, but I've got a feeling they don't do it. But I am going to bid on Jed Walter with this pick. Um, so it has I, to I happen. Believe, yeah, I, I believe that's you, like dog. It is, and of course we will match without uh, without even considering it. But if it doesn't happen, I mean, it should happen at pick one, to be honest, in the real draft. But it won't. Um, absolutely, Gold Coast are going to match and take Jed Walter. Wow. Here we are. So you'll see here, we've got a little pick calculator, right? So what you'll see here is how they match it. So currently at this stage, they'll take 788. That one. Look at this. Look, this is real time. That's what, 24, 26. So that's what, they'll need another one. 27. Need another one. So that's what, about... Oh, that should be enough. I think that's enough. I think that's enough. Here we are, look. You'll see. Um, and note that there was rumours today that Gold Coast are going to do a couple trades to get more points in, and I simply refused because I was too lazy. So... <laughs> there we are, look. So this is going to be our bet system because in real life, the AFL do this and just put them here. But but then it's if the points are surplus. If you watch the video, I'm not going to explain it again. If you watch the video, <laughs> Gold Coast commented and said, thank you very much for explaining this to everyone. So that's it. So they lose. Like oh, wait, the real that. Gold Coast. Do we I need thought... to talk about these players when they get drafted? Everyone knows about Harley Reid and mm. um, so Jed Walter, right? Go... Mate, they should do. Mate, Jed should Walter, do, key but... forward, good at football. That's the summary. Mm. What you can do, like dog for me, is just fill in while I do this. Uh, so what? I'll sing a song. Um, no, uh, look, Harley Reid and Jed Walter are the best players in this draft, mm. and I think there is definitely an argument that Jed Walter could go number one. I think key forwards do get that that upside, and I think Harley Reid has the opportunity to be really, really good. I just don't necessarily think that that will come to fruition at West Coast because they are bad. You know what? I forgot to do there. I did all that. What? And forgot to uh, move oh, wait, everything down. Move Can I down. insert a cell? <laughs> so North are going to still be on the clock here. Um, there's going to be a bunch of this. This is why the draft, everyone talked about heading in, the draft would blow out to like 25 mm. picks. and then. But it's okay because it comes back in at the other end, which is kind of true, but not really. So anyway, it's a joke. Hey, are, look. Jed Walter should be a North Melbourne player, but he's not. We are seeing chat. We are. There you are, look. You can see the uh you can see I'm doing it. Don't worry. Good day to AFL Infam. I think that's Cooper Gretch. Good day, Cooper. How are you doing, mate? Good day. Um Damo Kinnear. It is. We'll have fun. That that's hey, that's something to think. Whoever's got Sydney Damo, they have said they'll trade down if they don't get what they want. I I I, I saw someone ask who's the sauce, and I've got St. Kilda, but I don't know if that makes me the sauce. <laughs> and I've also got Sydney as well, so that I'm gonna have a fun a fun night. Mate, you should have fun, but we're going to take, in my opinion, this is a controversial opinion, but I think the best player in this draft, in my opinion, if I'm, a, if if I was building the list, Colby McCurchie would be my number one if I was a bottom two side, and I think they'll get him away. And my next pick, the media has copied me here. A lot of you, not anyone in the comments, but a lot of you slated me when I said that he would be their first pick, Dan Curtin. But everyone's jumped on the bandwagon. Danny Curtin is coming home. Is coming home. Now, Hawthorne. I've got Hawthorne. Um, yeah, I, I alluded to you before the draft that we might need to do a trade here. Uh, so... Melbourne would love to get involved at this pick selection. Uh, they have pick six. They probably want to keep pick 11, so they'll offer pick six and a future first for pick four with something coming back, something in the future coming back. Something in the future coming back. This is what? big. Tell you what, give, uh, me, give me your record. What, what do you want coming back? So currently, to help you out, 
I will tell you, Hawthorne possess next year, I believe they're full allotment. But let me have a yeah. look. Next year, Hawthorne have a first and a second, but then nothing till their fifth, which won't entertain you. Mm. Well, then it'll, it'd have to be the second. Melbourne's future first for Hawthorne's second. It's a slight upgrade. I think that's a good deal. Hmm. Do I chance the player that I want is there at seven? You know what? Half oh. on are going to do this trade. This is big. I love this. Smart move. And that's the thing. Daniel Curtin is really the, the key to the early couple of picks in the draft. If he falls, I think a lot of teams are very happy, but it makes sense for North to take him. And all of a sudden, Curtin goes off the board and trades are going out here. <laughs> right. It, it, it's, it's a tough one. And I know a lot of people are against the Dan Curtin thing, but it, it's come out again that he's very adamant that, and it's exactly like I said in my video, that is that is a player that is literally ready-made for Clarkson. Clarkson loves players like Dan Curtin. It's something that he's built his teams around historically. Mm -hmm. And for me, Zane Dersma, I've said it before, I mean, his, his one plus side is his Xavier's brother. Call me harsh, but I don't think he's a top five pick on pure potential I'm, when there's other players around him. Am I crazy that I, I think the uh, curtain thing makes perfect sense because North desperately need key defenders and the smart thing to do would be build in one mm. draft with you already got 10 midfielders on your list that are going to be really good? It's the only thing they don't have is key position talent. It's the only thing they haven't, they've like refused to draft in recent years. They've built the midfield. Come on, surely, surely they go key position there. For, um, for me, by the way, watching them both play, it makes zero sense to take Zern Desma. It makes, it makes zero it sense. It doesn't make and, any sense. And Dan Curtin, literally, I think the most obvious thing, every top player has a Dan Curtin. Every player, it's probably the most important person in the top teams. That ability to intercept and hit from down back. So I feel if you were picking as North, McKercher sorts your midfield out, you've got your ball winner, and then you've got your player that can burst from down back, intercept and turn defence into attack. Suddenly you're, you're dominant. But that being said, Melbourne, you wanted this pick. Who are you taking? They did. Melbourne would like, they've talked about this this week, they want... They want uh, game changers. They want some star players. They still think their team's pretty good, and they kind of want to do this two timeline thing that we took that the in, the NBA talked about with uh, Golden State, where you're good but you start start your build early. So they're going to take Zane Dersma for his upside. Um, purely stepping aside from, I'm not a massive Dersma fan because I'm a high floor player in in real life. But as Melbourne taking a swing with what's essentially a free pick. I'm taking a Dane, uh, Zane Dersma here. Good. I also think I was looking through the depth. I don't like going early. Um, if I'm Melbourne on a, on a key position player here, but I think if you can bring in some star upside to play mid forward, I think you yeah, absolutely jump on it. Well, Zane's there. Melbourne. I, th that's a sexy forward line though, isn't it? Zane, pick it. It's tasty, but Damo, the Doggies, a team that probably needs some injection. Who we think? Yeah. Um, well, their forward line's pretty stacked um, with all that they've brought in over the last few years. And when they traded away Josh Dunkley, everyone thought they'd be able to cover it. And But in the end, they probably lost a bit. And Tom Liberatore is getting on. So um, with uh, this pick, the Western Bulldogs are going to select Riley Sanders. Oh, Bang! That what. has that has that has thrown me. That might that might upset some people. I tell you That's that. going to change the draft order. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is a no-brainer for me. For two drafts running, I'm picking him for Hawthorne. And for me, I think if you watch Zane Dersma play, I always think people haven't seen this kid play. For me, I think if we're going excitement, Nick Watson is you don't get nicknamed the wizard without a choice. And for me, 
the wizard is bringing back Rioli vibes, excitement vibes, all them vibes. I feel Nick Watson up at Waverley. Bombs on seats. Guinea up forward. Oh, wow. Hawks are going to be the team to watch. Nick Watson becomes a Hawk. That's if this kid, if they can get him, that is like right in their wheelhouse for what they need. Dylan Moore, Bruce, Ginevan, um, and then Watson. Mate, that's a bit of fun. Mate, it's a bit of fun. Well, tell you what, you are up, Mr. Damo. Who are you selecting? I I wrestled with this pick a little bit when I was doing my research because what do the Giants need? They've kind of got a they've kind of got their midfield set. They've kind of got their defense set. They've kind of got their forward line set, but they did lose a few players like Daniel Lloyd through uh, through to retirement. Um, Jesse Hogan, who knows what's going to happen with him in the long term. They don't really have anyone long-term for next to Jesse Hogan. Jake Riccardi is coming along. They picked up Aaron Cadman last year, but I still feel like they could do with some firepower and some big bodies up forward. So I'm going to pick Nate Caddy. Yeah, that kills Nate. my next pick completely. <laughs> Nate Caddy. Would you love to see? I think that's a great acquisition is Mr. Nate Caddy up there. Um, good pick. Good pick. Um, we, oh dear, tell you what, that's my strategy of my next pick. <laughs> I, I was, I was, I was having a look at what I'll do, but there we are. We've got Ian, mm. you are on the clock. Yeah. Well, look, Geelong would have loved to have had Nate Caddy. He was my number one choice there. Having a look at Geelong. Look, there's, there's quite a lot of need for me just looking at their list and, and real age profile. They need to really hit the draft and, I probably would have loved to have split this Geelong pick and made a couple, but I really couldn't just find any perfect value. It wouldn't surprise me if it happened on the night, um, but uh, it's such a high pick. There's still plenty of talent there. And with that, uh, I know it's not maybe a ridiculous, ridiculous high need for them, knowing they've got some good key defenders in De Koning. They've got Stewart there, um, but they lost Radigalia, uh, and he's the next best there and so I'm gonna go Connor O'Sullivan, please. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. it Connor. He's O'Sullivan. probably surprised he's ended up at Geelong, but I, I think that's we've talked about their their list a lot in this offseason, Pom, and they need to start looking at what well, basically every era, but um mm. teaming him up with Sam DeConning and Jack Henry is gonna be gonna be very nice. Mm. Tell you what. Gold Coast will be living for this as well at the moment. Because- I know. I was just quietly well, sitting here. Just just shut the fuck up. Not for too long because uh, Dodoro's on and he, we are going through it. So we're going to we're gonna select Ethan Reid, please. <laughs> Boo. Sorry, Lap Dog. I'm not really sorry. I was just like, he's, he's just going. He's just going. <laughs> he's just... We, it, this, uh, to be fair, match. though, this is Just, by the way, this is very AFL because Isn't you it? do know you do know that the AFL aren't going to. So the bid comes in. By the way, uh, our it, mate Patch, who I used to do the podcast with, has been texting me the whole time saying, "Why is no one bidding on Gold Coast?" Little did he know, I am Gold Coast. <laughs> there we are. Right, so they need one seven. Oh, they mm-hmm. are. Look at that, one seventeen. So that is. We Which have. Pitch was that? That's that we one. Have Thirty-six and thirty-eight sitting there. That's that one and that one. Okay, so that goes there. That gets deleted. Fifty-five to that running tally. Right. Okay. Look at this. Ben, I won't make a mistake like I did last time. I'll move that down. Oh, you might. You might what? want to hold your horses because Essendon. Oh, that's they a also good point. want. They also want a, a key forward here, um, and so they're going to take Jordan Croft. Thank you. Oh, would you have a look at that? And Bulldogs match. I've got to go full Dodoro. Someone's got to start bidding on all these players. And so I thought says, it made sense to go with Essendon. So I'm says with Brian Draper and Goldie, I don't think Dons would bid on Reed. I, I think you underestimate the Dons. <laughs> like, plus, <laughs> Reed's better than all three of those Ruckman. So, 
Yeah, I think but, the, the thinking trying to get into Dodoro's head was simply, I'm surprised no one hasn't bid already. We're going to make someone else pay. Draft. And that was literally it, yeah. just stuff it up for everyone else. And gee, I'm tempted to bid on Jake Rogers. I'm going to pass on that just quickly here. Yeah, um, but look, there's quite a lot of needs for Essendon in this sort of draft. And they're at a weird spot where quite a few of the players I'd be looking at or really wanting for them have kind of all just been picked up. Um, I don't think the next couple of guys completely suit the needs here, but I'm going to go with the best one, which really stuffs my probably pick for Adelaide. But uh, I'm looking at midfield for him, and I'm going to be going with Darcy Wilson. Darcy Wilson, I love it. Fuck, I love I, it. I'm a big Darcy Wilson fan. I really was hoping he would uh, slip a little more. Hey, well, right, just give me five seconds to catch up. We you know how go. beforehand I said I have no plan B if the players I, I like get taken? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the issue. That's pretty much me with Adelaide's pick because I really wanted something else to happen above so I wasn't taking Darcy Wilson with Essendon. Um, I was close to taking <laughs> James Leake there literally just for the point of my next pick being right, but I just didn't feel like uh, that was the right move. So, yeah, now I'm going to try and look and see what an Adelaide can get up to in this draft. And I think there is a need for some midfielders. There's a need probably to get a bit more pace off the half back. Um, so maybe there's some scope to look for a leak uh, to kind of replace um, Dude there. But I'm going to go Caleb Windsor in this slot. Uh, I think God they still need it. a little bit on the outside. I, I know they've got, you know, Saligo played pretty well out there, but... I don't know. I feel like there is still scope for Windsor to, to eventually move into the middle a little bit more, into the guts, and is a good user of the ball. And I think Adelaide can definitely help with that in their midfield. Mate, I love that pick. I, I think that's a good pick. And the Darcy Wilson one, I feel like... Melbourne that, are not happy, by the way. <laughs> I, I feel like that's such an obvious pick as well. I, I really feel like that's such a good pick for them because mm. I just feel like that's what would happen. I feel yeah. like everyone's linked in with Caleb Windsor, but I feel like they have hate that a lot pick. of Caleb Windsors. Yeah, they've got a lot of slight outside players. I feel like they need someone that can do a little bit more. Um, and I know they probably need like a bigger body, and, and maybe Wilson's not 100% that, but a guy that can also go forward and, and do bits, I, I think it's a, it's a smart pick for the Dons, which is unlike their recent drafting. Probably. Yeah. I think, yeah. Oh. So I don't know who you're playing. You're, uh, you're, Cause it's clearly not the <laughs> So are. it Melbourne are very frustrated. Me, I am doing it here. I'll explain it the next time I do it. I, I was just in the zone then because I had two to do, but I'll take you through it again. Um, nice and slow, but like dog Melbourne. Well, Melbourne had Wilson and Windsor at the top of their list for the next group of selections. So um, it's a little bit of a drop off for who they want next, to be honest with you. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going <sighs> to, I think they would actually probably bid on Jake Rogers here. Um, do I want to make, yeah, I'll do that. Even though I am Gold Coast, Melbourne are going to bid on Jake Rogers just to make a bit of work for Pom while I, um, are you just well, buying time? Out. Yes. Are you, are, you, are you buying time? All right. So, yeah, Jake Rogers, you're bidding on your own player. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the smartest thing I've ever done, but. Hey, well, one of my favorite time. players in this draft as well, Jake Rogers. Yeah. Gold Coast turns out having an academy for 10 years with exclusive access to players is, is helpful. Um, and bonus list spots and bonus rookie spots. I think well, if that you happens to... as well, just interesting is that they would go into deficit. So uh, the and they've year still got an, this stage. I th they've still got another player to come as well. But I do think I do think Pom that um we'll probably see a couple of trades with with Gold Coast ahead of the draft. You, you, there was reportings of that today, so I think they'll bring some more points in. And I do have the pick for um for. Melbourne, whenever you want it. There we are. That's right. That's done. Okay, so Jake Rogers, what have I done wrong there? 
Let's go back to what it was at the start. So Melbourne goes down there. Gold Coast goes there. And look at this. Beautiful stuff. And that should go down one. Look at this. Pond. I trust you. This is Pond. incredible stuff. There we are. It's Kept very on. hard to excel under pressure. Just <laughs> hey, mate. Hey, mate, I home. do this all the time. Go on. Uh, so Melbourne, next on their list that I, I have put together is Colton Thulstrup. So yeah. there he is. That they they met him today and or well, met him during the week and spoke to him. Um, I think, again, it's just they're going for kind of upside here. I know people probably want them to take key position players. I think they'll be able to find some of them either later in the draft or continue to trade in that area, which is sort of how they've built this list. Um, I think up forward, they've actually got a decent number of key forwards. They just need to get them on the park. Obviously, the back lines are worry, but again, I don't want to burn a, a pick four, six or 11 really on a key position defender when I'm in a, a situation where I'm competing now. So that's why we're going for sort of players that can impact in the next one, two, three years rather than the guys that come in in four, five, six years' time. time. Mate, I love it. I love it. My camera has just froze, but you should be able to hear me. It'll come back on. My, my power keeps going on. Um, but so we're up to Sydney, Damo. Is this a... Just... I mean, there's a few players that I could just select, but the one that we really wanted is probably already gone. So, um, who was it? Won't reveal. Uh, North Melbourne, <laughs> your pick there, number 21. Yeah. I'll give you 16 and whatever Sydney's next pick is for pick 21. Hang on. <laughs> so 42 and 16 for 21. Yeah. Why do you want to drop backwards, Debo? Why are you overpaid to drop backwards? I mean, North Melbourne instantly say yes, but <laughs> I'm intrigued if I'm was that the, was, was 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 that the next pick? Oh, yeah, pick 16, we're here. Uh no, not 42. The next one. No, oh, you don't North want to be Melbourne. giving up anything else, mate. You want to no, be, why are you giving up 16 back. for 21? <laughs> no, that, that was my fault. I misheard him. 16 for 21. Oh, oh, I understand now. And 16, 21, and 50. So it'd be 21 and 50. So it would help you have the bids for a player that someone might bid on. I understand the theory. Yeah. Right. Is that what we're I doing? understand now. Very good, Damo. Well done. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I understand. I understand what you meant now. Sorry, that was my fault. I was in some... Okay, well, I was actually going to put a bid on, but my bid wasn't as tasty as that one. So let me have a look. All right. We're looking... I, I, I want to get... I, I want to be uh, a pain in the bum. I'm going to be a pain in the bum here, I reckon. And I am going to take... Will McCabe and Hawthorne are going to match. That makes sense. Love to see it. I am a big stinky meanie. I'll be back in two secs, gentlemen. I just go get a water and I don't have a pick for 700 picks. <laughs> hey, well, this is, you know what? I should have paid someone to do this just on the, be in the background. That would have been easy. You're That's doing a great cool. job at it. You are? I said you were doing a great job at it, mate. You're killing uh, it. Hey, mate, this is like this, for a couple of my mates who are in my fantasy league uh, in here at the moment, and this is what I literally do in real time. <laughs> right, so now I've got to get the Hawthorne match. So Hawthorne to match that, that's 8.54. Nice and easy. And Hawthorne, so all these are one pick ahead. I automatically did it. 8.54, so one more pick. One more pick. Ten seventy three. 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 Here we are, don't worry. Double dummy. I believe it's to help um 
with matching some bids and whatnot, moving back, but also getting the uh, getting some points. So, them picks that I need to delete are the ones below. So, Sydney and them two. Okay. And that stays there. That stays there. Oh, look at this. Pom. Tell you what, Cal Toomey doesn't have this. Pom does. <laughs> Cal Toomey doesn't have a Pom. No one has a Pom, except us. Oh, for fuck's sake. There we are. Right. And then if I get rid of that, that just makes it easier. And let's go back to what I was doing. You guys are going to help maths. Hey, I, I go into the zone. It's like being at school again. Well, 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 100, okay, 120 so, people watching right now, by the way. Thank you very much, everyone, as well. Make sure you hit a like. Hit the like and subscribe. Now, North have traded up. North are in a real healthy position here. And you know what I'm going to do? All right, I've got my taller guy sorted. And I've got a couple of picks coming up. So... I feel like right now I can go sexy. I can go sexy. And I'm surprised he's there, but probably my favorite person in this draft. And I feel like with Sheasel moving forward, mm. um, with them saying they want outside run, uh, I am taking James Leak from the Tasmanian Devils. Great uh, pick. The Tassie discount every year. Mate, I, I love this kid, and I just feel like if we did trade down, I think I can nail the draft in this next pick. I feel like my next couple of picks, I am totally fine. So, St. Kilda, you are on the clock. Um... I've been given a very low-stress job with the teams I have. <laughs> Port Melbourne, Brisbane, Gold Coast. Thank you, Pom. Much appreciated. Well, Damo thinks so. So, yeah, the theory of that is there is a guy called Caden Cleary coming up, and you would imagine that the way these bids are going, someone's going to have a bid on him. So, Sydney now have acquired them points, and probably the players they're looking at, which Kenny has described, there's a plethora of them where they've traded down to. There's also uh, limited list spots. So, I know mm. people would say, why didn't you just take 16 and match later? Um Sydney, uh, how many picks are they taking into the draft? Two, three? Uh, uh, they're taking I... two into the draft, we believe. Two list spots. Uh, St. Kilda. Um, St. Kilda could bid, but they're just going to be boring and take ja Charlie Edwards. Oh, you know what? I, I love a draft where someone goes a little bit earlier then you've got them on your sheet because it does two things. One, you start questioning your ability <laughs> and logic and be like, have I made a big mistake here? But two, makes you a little bit excited for mm. the next pick. Oh, he's one of the only players that I don't have a super coach average for. I do on my spreadsheet. Well, I must have fucked it up, Pom. <laughs> I think you've got AFL Fantasy for him on your sheet. Yeah, probably. But mm. Mr. Ian. Yes, we're Adelaide back on the clock. Tries. Yeah, get another pick here. And see, it's kind of worked out really well for Adelaide with this pick, which is why I went the midfielder with the first one. I was tempted to look at James Leake, but when I was trying to see who could be available at some of these later picks, I was trying to predict this draft a million different ways to see if I was going to stuff myself up, but it's worked out well. And they do need something help on that half back line at the moment. And so I'm going with Riley Hardiman for the Adelaide Crows. I think it's the perfect pick for needs. Hey, I think it's I Riley think it's Hardiman. I think it's a good pick. And we love a little bit of Hardiman around here, these parts. We've, it's interesting because the rumours with Adelaide as well is one of my one of my boys is is in their conversation. We talked about Ruckman, so it's going to be interesting what you do with your next pick, whether we see a Ruckman. But the fastest Ruckman I've ever seen, Taylor Good, is there. But mm. that being said, we're going to go with Rooks here, and what we're thinking here is GWS are right between us. So I feel like GWS are going to dictate 
in the real draft, if we hadn't traded that pick, I feel like we'd have two picks after them and we're going to do it. Because I can't chance my arm on a position that I want, I'm going to take my preferred Ruckman at this situation and I'm going to bring Will Green to my football club. Knowing that I've got a guaranteed pick next with the guy that I want to fill another hole. But Will Green, I get my Ruckman out of the way. I'm happy. And now I know that the next pick is basically a free hit. Love Will Green. Damer. This is where do I'm okay favor. taking tools. Second round. Do, do um, me a favour because I'm between three players. So just take one off me. <laughs> Uh, the Giants are <laughs> big fans of this player. He's chosen to go with football instead of cricket. Um, it's Harry Dimitia. Harry Dimitia. That, that, Tell that me a bit help. about him other than he's a cricket player. Anyone? Oh, he, he's small. He's well, he's not small to say, but he's that general forward that can pinch it in the mid, quick, bullet like kick, loves the pressure, and he's probably got the second sexiest hair behind Colton mm. in this draft. Sexy boy. I tell you, if, if you're picking on looks, Colton's in there. Colton's in there. Just adds to the run and gun, I think, of GWS. It's the game style they love to play. So to get another guy that can play midfield, play forward, gee, it's a good pick. You know I don't what? After a lot, the old GWS Giants. You know what? Part of me here thinks I could just be so clever. <laughs> do I do it? Do it. Okay. North Melbourne select Caden Cleary. Oh. <laughs> am i a genius a stitch up and i love it no, no no i'll tell you what because there would have been a written agreement <laughs> yeah in not, real not, life uh, they'd be yeah. doing a handshake we uh, won't be yeah so north melbourne won't do that it was just banter I, I, when i did that trade <laughs> i just looked at the draft board and i was like if i was a list manager i would promise sydney that i won't do it and then do it <laughs> <laughs> They'd never trade with me again, but no, serious. We will take. Oh, I'm looking at my preferred selection. There's a person that I didn't think would slide here, and I kind of want him. But I'm going to do the right thing by North Melbourne. I'm going to, I've got my back sorted. I've got my outside run sorted. I've got my rook sorted. I'm now going to give Larky a proper player to um, work alongside. And I am taking the great Archer Reed. Maybe mm. a bit early. I don't care. I think Archer Reed is very underrated. I think playing in that system with probably the best developer of uh, tall players that we've seen in the league who've worked with similar players in Clarkson with Archer. I think it makes sense. So Archer Reed joins, and I feel like North have nailed everything they've wanted. They're ready to launch. I don't want to influence the draft but is there still someone's name on the board that's really obvious and is, we're all surprised is still available i don't want to say who it is i don't want to influence but does everyone still have someone who's really highly ranked or have i just missed a draft pick can you I've scroll up one but i i got one but i expected him to potentially slide if that helps but i, I don't know if we're thinking of the same guy can you scroll up for me Paul? on the uh draft Drafted players. So so far, wow, well, wow. Well, who's on the clock? Oh yeah, good Damon, recap. Good clock. recap. Mm. But we've got Harley Reid going to Eagles. Jed Walter, Colby McCurcher, Dan McCurr, and ending up at North. Jed Walter at Gold Coast. Zane Dersma was traded up. Half under a swap of pick five and seven in this draft um, for a future second with a future first coming back. So half on fell two places, gained about twelve places next year. GWS ended up with Nate Caddy. Cadman and Caddy looking quite the combination. Connor O'Sullivan comes into Fremantle. They've got a better version of Lockie Henderson. Well done to them. Ethan Reed, the best rook in the draft, joins Gold Coast after Dogs also had to match a bit on Croft because Dodoro went out with a bang. Caleb Windsor joins probably the most exciting midfield at Adelaide Crows. Jake Rogers, he finds his that way home after bid Melbourne well. bid. Will McCabe, he was bid on after Northwood dickheads with their pick and went James Lake. Charlie Edwards at Sandy Dragons finds his new home at Saints. Hardiman joins Adelaide, the future marauding Rory Laird. 
Will Green and Archer Reed join North, while Harry D. Matea joined the exciting revolution under Kingsley. And Sydney are going to... Uh, Sydney are going to bid on Will Graham. <laughs> yeah, you're in... Oh, oh what? I mean, obviously, oh, no. they're going to match, but fucking... Why? <laughs> Why? See, that's it. They they escaped sort of the, the couple of sort of top five or so picks in the draft, and all of a sudden it, it comes back the other way. You thought you were safe, and Damo's gone bang. And we have to match it, but seriously, why? <laughs> you know what? Get him into though, a deficit. Like, I, come on. If, if we were a, a proper league. You wouldn't like, match it. No, you would, you'd just be doing... If you were North, you would be doing this all the time. Like if I was North, oh right, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the draft ruiners. Oh, could you Absolutely. imagine like one year someone's just had enough and like at pick one they just bid on every single possible like player and then everyone just matches the bids. That would be it'd be a great, great way nights. to end the bidding <laughs> system, which they should. <laughs> well, Graham, I'm a big fan of Will Graham. I feel like he's not talked about like a lot. We've never had this before in the AFL, but NBA's. Academy players, he, he's a very, he's been a late, late bloomer as well mm. for them. A late bloomer for him. I, I really like Will Graham. Jake Rogers and Will Graham are my two favourite from the Gold Coast. I love Ethan Reed, but I like it. But you've done that, Damo. You've totally knocked Gold Coast out. Let Dog gets to put his feet up, have a cup of tea. Probably stick around and lie that he's going to do a future trade so he can eat <laughs> the uh, buffet they've got going. But Sydney, what's Kinnear doing? They've stacked up a bit in their defense, and this player is listed as a defender, but I think his ability to um, clot with his closing speed and his ability to play up the ground and even on ball makes um, Zane Zakostelski a really attractive Ooh. pick for Sydney, and they're going to take him. I love that pick. Uh, I love that pick. I do Zane. love I that see. pick. Right. Average Come 99 here. in the waffle under 18s for Supercoach. Who cares about AFL Fantasy? And 64 <laughs> in the under 18 champs. There he is. Tell you what, I, you, you also are seeing off screen, just so you know, I have got another draft board. That's my like priority. So I am updating three as we go, but Collingwood are on the clock. I feel like Collingwood, and this is where I'm excited about because I feel like every club here has got excitement picks, right? So it's fallen, if you watch the Swoop Luke video, exactly as I predicted. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly as I predicted of where Collingwood will have. Now, Collingwood are going to look at Sydney taking the bid. I joked I was going to bid on Caden Cleary, but straight away I am taking the bid of Caden Cleary because I feel like Graham Wright is an intelligent man, and he can see here an opportunity to knock out his rivals. Smart. Imagine if we all did that. <laughs> but you got to keep that goodwill, apparently. That's just no, what you have to do. In when has it ever come? It's like when in the NBA when they say, no, you got to look after the player managers. It always comes back. When has it can ever just, come back? Can I just say, oh, I'm an old school pom. I'm not like the modern day English pom cricket team. I'm an old school pom. I play to win. Don't know what fucking integrity is. Uh, <laughs> Damo, are you matching, Mister? Oh, yeah, ma I'm matching that. I'm matching that. Okay, you sure? Because we wouldn't mind him running around. Yeah, I, I can find a no. place for him. What's the I'm, best I'm, player I'm, I'm that's never that. been matched? That's what I want to know. It's been bid on, but not matched. There can't be many. It is there a good not. one. Oh, there is a good one. I remember uh, Noah Cumberland was a Brisbane Lions Academy player. Does that count? Okay. I, I guess. Is he, is he the best is, one? Is, Shout out is to is whoever donated to the Movember campaign anon anonymously. Because I'm just thinking about who else has in, um Will Martin wasn't um what wasn't matched, but he's now delisted. Um Noah Cumberland's pro pro probably the most noteworthy player that hasn't been matched. Josh Dunkley says Jacob Kov. 
Oh yeah, because he because because he because he, he, he could have been a father son at Sydney. Don't you have to nominate? Yeah, how does that yeah. work, father son? I'm yeah, I'm you have to nominate. Yeah, but I'm not sure if they did because I don't know if you wanted to go there. I'm looking it up, and the article is titled "Dunkley a Happy Dog After Awkward Father Son Selection." <laughs> Okay, After so nominating Clary... the sons as his preferred destination under the father-son rule, his father's old club declined to match the bid of number 25. <laughs> that's Okay, well, that's the answer to the question, by the way. It's I knew there Parker. was someone big. That's the one. That's insane. Imagine passing on that. This one's tough, right, because I've got a need in place, but the need that I have in place I feel is far too early for me to take this gentleman that I am thinking of. So I am going to go with the slider here. Mm. I see a lot of a young Jamie Elliott in this guy, and I feel like there is a lot of hype around Nick Watson. There is a lot of hype as well around Zane Dersma. I feel like Collingwood are going to look at this player and go, we've lost Ginny. We've gained Schultz. This will allow Jamie Elliott not to play so high up the ground. And we're taking Lachlan Collard with this pick to you make bastard. probably the most exciting, <laughs> dynamic forward line in the hey, AFL. Mate, are, are you upset because you wanted him or because? I had, uh, uh, he, 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 he was in the gun for, for one of my next picks. Hmm. Is is he uh is he not not matchable caller? No, he is not, if, he's he's not, a, if he not, if he was a stupid state, but evidently Western oh, Australia. Oh, WA is one of the one pretend yeah. states that don't get NGA access. <laughs> ah. Yeah, of course, of course. Why would you? <laughs> Fuck. Ian, I've probably ruined your pick there. I'll be honest, no, you've you've kind of everything's worked out well for Adelaide, except they wanted Darcy Wilson over um, Caleb Windsor, but they're happy to take that because everything else has worked out. They went midfielder with their first pick to hope that a couple of the, the running defenders were going to be available, either at that pick where they ended up getting Hardiman or there's still a plenty on the board currently, which so kind of would have worked out there. But the need for Adelaide that I'm looking at here, they could definitely probably do with a, a key defender um, or – and probably a key forward, but I don't think they need another young key forward. They probably need someone more ready to go. Um, but the other thing, the big need, is another Ruckman because old O'Brien is starting to age and they need someone coming through. Don't here. you and disrespect he... Kieran Strawn like that. <laughs> Do not disrespect the Strucken. And while I would say Mitch Edwards would be my highest rated Ruckman, you just can't look past having someone from your own state. So I'm going for Taylor Goad for the big high upside on him, incredibly mobile and so quick for a Ruckman. It feels like this is probably the best draft Ruck class that they may ever be, particularly at least just under 18 level at the moment. And it's moving towards that modern Rucks. It's not like last year where you just got big beast humans that can't actually run. They just hit the ball this year. We've got some mobile rucks and yeah, Taylor Goad for me. Mate, my, one of my favorites, we've been talking about him a lot, freakish speed if you get a chance. And freakish speed, we've got Bitey Blues, my good mate, complaining it's taking for ages to get to Carlton's first pick. Yeah, we're Jesus, still in the if first the AFL, If the AFL goes as fast as this for 26, fuck me. <laughs> They're doing you, this over two nights. Tell, tell you what, we'd be sacked as list managers in the AFL because they haven't got an ad break in yet. Leg dog. I mean, Damo, St. Kilda, Skilda. Who are you picking? St. Kilda. I don't think that this is a list need, but Stephen Silvani has really likes this guy, and I can see why. And players like this seem to follow Ross Lyon around at, at his at his clubs and um, they're going to pick Ollie Murphy. That, that is a good pick. And mm, it that's makes someone, sense. by the way, that's the person I was surprised was still on the board. You know, the thing that actually annoys me about Ollie Murphy is he hasn't got a massive long line of injuries, but he is the height of Droff's, uh, Sauce's usual picks. 
Has he also Kelvin featured in Carlton's VFL team? Is that a prerequisite for <laughs> Soft to love? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that, that's a really good get for them. It allows them to build mm. that that back spine a bit more as as um, as time continues on. Dougal Howard, Wilkie. Fuck. Yeah, that's annoying. Right, I've got my Nick Austin head on, right? So historically, Nick Austin does interview a lot of NGA players. So Lawal. This is instantly... the final pick in round one. Pick 745. <laughs> really does excite me. I am looking at my draft board and I am happy to see that everyone Carlton is. I find Ari Seanmaker is a no for Carlton <laughs> purely because we've already drafted the better version of Ari Seanmaker. So with this selection, Carlton are going to stick with what they know. They're bringing in some excitement. They're bringing in some feel-good factor. Welcome to the greatest club on earth. Mr. Lumaman Lowell, and there he is. Oh, you uh, love this you? guy, mate. I am in love. I, uh, I GM at GM Vet Rebels are one of my dirty little secrets, but I feel like in this pick, Colin would have done it as well because I'm their list manager. I, I, I feel like if you've got NGA options and there's players around your picks that are similar. You take them because these guys have had elite level coaching from the age of 13. They're already better than their predecessors. So I feel like Lawal comes in. We I love that the Bulldogs like miss it. out on him, but they Welcome. got to get um the best player in their draft when when they had that academy pick. That's just primo. Welcome. And now looking at the rest of the picks, I'm guaranteed to get the guy I want. So 28 Mr. picks in the first round. <laughs> hey, Damo. Hit me. Who are you going with? One booming kick goes out at West Coast in Shannon Hearn. Another booming kick comes in. Also means they've got a bit of key defensive depth behind the aging Jeremy McGovern and Tom Barras, who's entering his later stages. They select Ari Schoenmaker. Hey. After I bagged him. That's why I should be a list manager, because I would have publicly bagged Ari. <laughs> Tom, were you alluding that Lockie Cowan was the better Ari? He was, indeed. Indeed. Hey, I hey, thought I, so. Yeah, you know I'm loyal, though, to my Tazzy boys, but I'm glad to see Ari picked up. Very solid player, and I think he suits what... I agree with you there with the big booming kick. I feel like he suits, and that's why he wasn't entertained for my Cowan selection. But, Geelong, you need mm. to rebuild. Here we go. Yeah, the guy I probably had as my number one need here is still available, I believe. Just trying to go through, double check the list here, trying to make sure he is. Um, Because I'm looking at midfield. For some reason, I can't find him on my list, so I'm very worried that he has disappeared. Bear with me, someone... I think no, he has. Available. He has gone. He has gone. Oh, yeah. The first option. I was going midfield, and basically with Geelong, the man I was hoping was going to fall to me was a Charlie Edwards because I wanted a bit more well-rounded midfielder for Geelong. Um, but we're going to go the big boy. We're going to go George Stevens with this pick. I know they probably oh, now what, are getting, was. getting a few too many more inside oh. mids, knowing they did get Clark. But that's kind of what Geelong have built their style of play on at the coalface and they're losing a few over the next couple of years. So why not replace it with the next core coming through? And Pom is gutted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, okay. It's George Stevens. Come on, mate. Here you are. My, my he held on for a while. A sexy little friend. I mean, it is about where you'd imagine he's going to be taken, to be fair. He's going to be around. He feels pick. like one of those players. I th- I'm not saying that he, I, he'll he obviously be taking this draft, but you know every year we get one of those big mids and we go, oh, he's in for sure, and then he get, ends up getting taken in the rookie draft. Like, again, I don't think that's going to happen in this case, but he's he's got that, like, everyone wants him. Oh, wait, we got him for free in the rookie draft. What happened? <laughs> Carl, um are going to this is the big slider of the draft for me um for me there's been a lot being talked about this poor little guy um a lot of nonsense as well about his attitude and stuff but dual kicking goal kicking machine ashton moore joins the Carlton football club and uh me and nick austin now head down to the ivanhoe for a well-deserved pint mm, yeah that's good 
I like it. What what did he kick? Two goals a game or something? In the, uh... He did indeed. And yeah, at the moment, Carlton looked like it's going to be two picks and then there'll probably be one pick in the rookie draft because they promoted someone this morning. But I feel like Carlton have covered their bases. They've mm. got the, the two sliders from this time last year. And uh, yeah, me and Nick Austin. Which is exactly cool. how we draft, by the way. Mm. Exactly it is, and, how we draft. And, and we handball, pardon the pun, to Richmond and say, welcome. What do you want to do? Yeah, you've hurt me there, Pommy. I will be honest. Uh, he was the guy I really had lined up for that pick. Looking at Richmond, they're in a weird spot list-wise um, where they're kind of just smack bang in the middle. They're not completely bad starting to rebuild. They're kind of just in the middle there. They're not 100% competing and they do have a fair few list needs. I would say that key forward um, is another one that they're really looking to address now that I know Kaziski came across. They lose Rewalt. Lynch, not sure what his body's like um, currently, but the guy I wanted is gone and I could probably reach and pick up someone here, but I'm not sure that's the right play there's another player who i had a lot higher that i can't believe he's still on the board but he doesn't suit a need i wanted to go small but ashton he's gone and as you can tell i'm 100 padding for time trying to figure out where to go for <laughs> richmond um because i'm also what i've tried to do for this is really also factor in my next pick and if say i wanted a key forward for my first pick but oh maybe i also wanted a half back but then the next one it looks like all the key forwards are available I'm going to go and select the other. And so in this pick, I've got to go somewhat tall. I'm going with Logan Morris. He's a little bit undersized, but the man, he works well. He's got the footy IQ, great on the lead, always seems to find the ball regardless. And they, they need some height to develop in that forward line. Uh, slight reach for me, but I think I'm going to have to pick for need here with the guys I wanted off the board. I think it's a good gap, to be honest. Uh it's completely stifled my next pick for my, my <laughs> team. But yeah, good pick. Can't argue with your logic. Um, well, Brisbane's on the board and Tony Amadeo's just absolutely spoiled the selection that Brisbane would be making. Uh, Brisbane are going to take Cooper Simpson. Uh, Brisbane don't really lack for much. Maybe you could put in a developing key defender. Maybe you could put in a developing ruckman. But I think what they want is probably just someone that can play VFL, play in the midfield and potentially uh, come into the seniors and pinch it up forward. So they will take Cooper Simpson, noting that Will Ashcroft's out next year, but Devin Robinson will fill that role. And It's hard to pick for a team like Brisbane because what do they need, really? Not much. Mate, Spawn and Cooper, my good mate. I'm sorry, mate, you're going interstate. I love you, Cooper Simpson, if you're listening. But <laughs> I, Ian, going. I for did go I for a country boy, hate. by the way. What? I did. I did go for a country boy because Brisbane love doing that. Well, you broke my heart, but Mister Essendon, club, yeah, player I love, club I hate. <laughs> I'm very excited for this pick. Um, I will potentially need some clarification so I don't make a complete fool of myself, but I'm, I'm putting the Dodoro mask on, so maybe that is kind of why I'm in this predicament because there's a player who I can't believe he's still available at this pick. It's kind of a dream for Essendon. They weren't able to get uh, James Leake early because I just felt that there were better players there. Didn't think this man would be at my pick, but Essendon, they need someone who can move the ball off half back. And so why not go, in my opinion, the second best in that position in the draft, Archie Roberts? I agree. Um, there's a few there as well. We've got Chu Giaf as well. And I feel mm. like Chu Giaf is that player that it's going to take a while to going to take a while to, I just think, cement his place. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I feel like he's, there's a bit of work to do, but I agree. Archie Roberts, mm. and I think that's top 10. it's probably a, a big thing with Essendon as well. Their list, when I was looking at it, surprisingly on paper, it looked a lot better than they've definitely performed. And their kind of age demographic is sort of ready to kind of compete a little bit. And that's why I also thought that was a decent pick because he's a guy that can come in straight away round one where they probably need that they don't need a lot more of these really young 18 year olds that are nowhere near it they 
kind of need to boost themselves a little bit. Um, and I think that that will help the, the run and carry to maybe finally, I know he's not exactly that player, but trying to replace that Adam Saad factor. Mate. He's probably not a uh, ceiling raiser, but I think he's a floor lifter, if that makes sense. So mm. I think, and I think they need a bit of that because, um, as we've discussed a lot, I think Essendon's upside, which I don't think happens this year, but I think it comes from the the high end talent they've got on the list that hasn't performed yet. But I like Archie Roberts. I think he could just slip in, as you said. I think that's a fantastic pick, and I'm very frustrated that he was taken there. I feel like Collingwood. Our obvious selections are gone, but I'm a big fan of this guy. Can play forward, can play back, and can play rook. Um, Will Dawson comes in. I feel like mm. there's no key forwards here good enough for me to take. Um, and I feel now I'm t- I'm tempted here, dependent on how it goes, I, th- there is a trade waiting to happen here because I feel that one of the teams I control – has enough list spaces for me to trade up. I may enter the draft with a late move. But Ian, back to you. Fremantle, do the wonderful Damo proud. He sat there like, please don't fuck this up. Well, this is the hard thing because I was also just looking at my next pick with Essendon and basically every player I had, um, and I had about seven of them for their next pick, are all off the board. So that has thrown complete chaos uh, in my Essendon stakes, um, but I I'll, I'll won't worry about that. Firstly, I'll have a look at, at Frio to try and see who's still available, who they can still get. And one thing that maybe, um, yeah, when I was looking at them, look, I'm a, I like Frio. They're, they're a team that I actually don't hate. They're probably one of the only few in the AFL. So looking at them, they do have a fair few needs I would love to continue to add to that midfield I know I've got some really strong plays in there but I don't think that there's a great deal of depth to it currently and obviously small forward is a big area now losing Schultze um, they need to do something in that area Um, but the player I think just really stands out at this pick is the, the homeboy Cohen Sanchez I think it just really makes sense for their needs can play a bit of midfield as well, um, but adds just that run um, and, and goal kicking in the forward line. I, I, I've got them taken them. I don't know. How do you feel about that, Mr. Damo? East Fremantle boy finds a yep. home. Yep. Very good. Very good. Very good. I already gave, um, I already gave Ian my uh, notes earlier. So he knows who I want. Hmm. Yeah, I had Lance Collard as my number one hope. If he happened to really slide, I definitely didn't think he would get that far. Um, but yeah, definitely their, their next few picks are going to be interesting because they just didn't have the the capital, uh, I think, to really trade up, which it sounds like they may be able to get one of Gold Coast picks. But if they're only then left with, you know, that pick and a really late one, I don't think that sort of suits their needs. They need to find a way to trade higher into this draft, but still keep a fair few picks. So it'll be interesting to see what they do on um, draft night. Now moving to Essendon. I, who have I selected already? We've gone, you know, Darcy Wilson. We've gone Roberts in the defense. I still would love some key position players. I'm not sure I've got the right guy that suits that need at this pick. Um, But the other big thing that it's weird Maybe Essendon supporters, if there's any in the chat, they may completely disagree with me because they've got a list full of them. But I don't think they actually have a good small forward. Like, I know their whole list is smalls in there, but they don't have a guy that can kick a lot of goals and really put that on the scoreboard. And there's a guy that has uh, fallen a little bit here that I think will suit that is Phoenix Gothard. That is a good, good, good pick. I, I do like it. I do like it. I, I'm surprised he's there. You are asking questions here because I am so keen to put a bid mm. coming up. But I love it. Phoenix Gothard, he's one of my favourite players. I'm surprised he's here. And this is mm. why, for those watching at home, you've got to remember that good teams draft on need. They don't draft on skill level. And these mm-hmm. clubs here, some of these are their first picks. So there is going to be sliders mm-hmm. from that 20 because some teams aren't going to take the best player. They're going to take a need. And with that mm-hmm. being said, Damo, Hawthorne would like to come in with an offer for pick 38. Right? Okay. What, do you, what have you got? So we've already got 219 in debt 
um, from the AFL to you. So we're going to offer you, right, because we know you need pick spaces. We're going to offer you the Melbourne first rounder we got. We want the Eagles second rounder back and we will give you 51. So you've got two picks in a row to jump up to 38. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Da, 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 da. This is a pretty spicy. fucking boring stream if you said no. <laughs> oh, you, you could have said no. You could have said no. With that being said, um, the Half on Football Club have looked at needs and ascertained what they want. And mm. knowing that, the chances are it's working out. We are going to look at our list. And I look at the half on, I think the half on side is a great side already, their list build. But one thing that I'm looking at is Ned Reeves and Lloyd Meek. They are mid age players. Are they going to take me to the next, to the next stage? We're looking at it before the bid can be matched. We're taking Mitch Edwards. We're getting that out of the way now. <laughs> Thank you, because I don't think Bob. Frio need more <laughs> big Ruckman. Uh, I feel like that's not – we'd probably have to match it anyway, and then that's where you, you look at trading Sean Darcy at season's end or something like that, get some value. Well, but yeah, considering, Sean, considering Sean Darcy is about to put pen to paper for a six-year deal, I would be <laughs> – like if 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 they match on Mitch Edwards after if, if he gets past 40, what are you going to do with him? You've got, you, you've got like eight other Ruckman mm. on, on your list – and then you get Mitch Edwards. Are you going to trade one of your Ruckman? Is or you, I just it doesn't make sense to me for, for them mm. to take him. It feels like if they take him, it'll be a just because we can kind of thing. Mm. It's where I wish we had maybe more like the NFL, where the trade period continues well past the draft. So if you end up even bringing someone in, you could immediately just be like, "Can we trade him immediately right. now to the highest bidder?" <laughs> you should be able to trade players drafted on draft night. Yeah. That would actually. You should be. We, that would fix the bidding system, by the way. But Pommy, that's a discussion for another day. Mate, I'm I'm happy with that. I feel like Hawthorne's period, Nick Watson, Will McCabe, and Mitch Edwards. I've covered all the bases. Like Dog, you are Brisbane. What are you doing? Yeah, Brisbane are a little annoyed. <laughs> uh, they certainly Sorry. thought they were going to get a sneaky Mitch Ed Edwards to come in and develop behind Oscar. That's McAdee. why I bid. That, that's why I bid. Yeah. I was waiting for as long as possible, so it cost me five picks. That trade, yeah. roughly, I think will cost me seven picks. Yeah, no. Um, so that's slightly annoying because we didn't have him at, on our target, but we were excited when we thought maybe we were going to get him. Again, I spoke about what do they need. Um not much. So I'm going to just take the player that I think can probably is a relatively safe pick, relatively boring pick. I'm going to take Clay Hall from uh, WA. Just a, another guy that I think could be molded into a, a whole range of different things. You know what? I'd love to be a list manager at this point because there was about eight players that I am in love with, but I, I love it. And Damo, we are now at the situation that every club in the league can match any NGA. That Hawthorne trade is looking cleverer and cleverer because the two players now are in matchable range. But St Kilda, who are you looking at? St Kilda, well, they've already brought in... Well, they traded for Liam Henry. They've already got Naziah Wangan in Malera, but... They still need a bit of run on the outside and a, and a few more bigger bodies that can go up and uh, up and down the wing a bit. So, uh, Saints are going to pick Joel Frazier. Makes sense. I, I actually thought he was going to go Brisbane's pick. My, my my brain was Joel Frazier to Brisbane, so that's how I took the calculated risk of trading there. I was like, "There's no way Chu Giaf is going that next pick." So I, I love it. So great pick. Um, and GMV Rebels as well. One of them teams are, are probably the closest we can see to a Tasmania in Melbourne. They they just get forgotten about for some reason. It's interesting, interesting mm. stuff. Has there been any, if those in chat, has there been any major surprises to you? 
Charlie Nate, I think you'll find him on the VFL. Just shout out to Pom's genius as well, calling Patrick Nate joining the VFL team. All right, I, 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 that was good. But um, Mr. Ian, while you do that, just is there anyone who you're happy with? We'll do a recap at the end of pick 54. Mm. But Richmond, Ian. Yeah, uh, there's a guy that I'm surprised he's gone this late. I know they won't be able to get him, but we'll bid on um, to Jayath. We'll do that here because we can't believe that he has made his way um, as an actual academy player. Yeah, well, they have... Yeah, so this deck gets wiped out. There we are. Right, and that will be exactly there so that will be yeah so the so for those watching at home the debt was 219 they would live here so effectively what will happen in this situation is that will happen but there's still a pick on the board half on come here and stay there if you know what i mean so that's how it will look Hopefully I've explained that. If, if you watch the video, I do massive visual representation. It's a lot easier when I've scripted a video to explain it. Because, <laughs> because I, I did that with my children. So I, I did that, explain that with my kids. So I thought, not patronizing anyone, but if, if an eight-year-old could work it out, we're probably on the right path for how complicated it is, but being explained. Because my kids struggle with maths, believe it or not. They're not really my kids, I don't think, but... That's a little bit harsh. Yeah, yeah. David's all right. But here we are. Tune me off. I match that bid. Um, I match that bid. Um, for those asking, this bid here, um, Matthew, was I got Melbourne's future third for Hawthorne's future second. And we swapped the picks back. And then we did a super trade here where I gave Melbourne's future first to Eagles and got Eagles' future Second, second and i mm. gave them pick 52 so if you want a list manager for hawthorne sign me up <laughs> and i'm back so, on which... with richmond which is yeah as i said their list is kind of tough to see what they can really do with these picks they kind of need a bit of youth to come through and these later picks aren't super helpful and a lot of players i think i would have ideally had them pegged for all gone. I went key position with their first pick and I'm looking probably in the forward line. I think they need someone that has the ability to, to kick goals. I feel like that's what they're kind of lacking. And there's a guy still available who pretty much early into the season was really one of my favorite small, medium forwards. Maybe others kind of went past him with being able to add other facets of their game. But I really like Jack Deline for Richmond here. I, I think Ooh. he's able to fly in the air and take a take a grab if you need him to. But he just he has the magic of being able to kick a goal out of nowhere. Like he he doesn't even look at the goals half the time. He picks it up and goes straight for it. And when I'm looking at Richmond and it's like, okay, who's kicking the goals as a small? It's Bolton, Dusty still. Judson Clark coming through as a kind of medium size. I don't think there's a lot. So I think, yeah, Jack Deline would line up nicely into that Richmond forward line. Mate, uh, mate, I, I I love it. I absolutely love that pick. I agree. I'm a big fan of Deline as well. He was one of the guys that, before he started to slide, I was going to discuss for Carlton's pick. But mm. as we know, Carlton and well, – well, we should be all right there. Should be all right. I mean, we should be all right, but I think that's a great pick for Rich Richmond. He's the kind of player that it works. But let the Melbourne demons, Travis getting yeah. stuck into you because he doesn't like your Brisbane picks. Well, he can come and do the draft if he wants. <laughs> uh, Brisbane are really good, and it, but I don't think they're going to take developing key position players with their early with their too early picks. Um, Melbourne, well, see, I had Melbourne only taking, or we had Melbourne only taking two players, uh, which they've already taken. Um, I think they still are deciding between two and three in real life. But there is a guy that I like for them. So if if we're if I'm being the list manager, I'm taking a third selection. 
and I'm going to take uh, Tyson Suruk. Suruk? Suruk? I don't know how to pronounce it. Let's go down to T. Uh, S S R U K. Yeah, Tyson Truck. Yeah. If you say it in my accent, it sounds like you're swearing. So, I mean, I think in real life, if he's available, they might rookie him because I think they probably only take two actual live selections. But for the fun of the draft, I'm taking him with their third selection and then they'll be done for the draft. Mate, I love it. Now, we've got so you, so we've got GWS with Damo. Damo, who are you selecting here? I think the Giants pretty much got who they wanted to at the top end with their first two picks. So with this pick... They're just going to go for best available um, and will probably be their last pick in the draft. Um, and it's uh, Angus Hasty. Damn. I'm, I'm surprised he's got this far down. It just shows you how hard these drafts are because it's all well and good when you're doing it on your mm. own. But when you've got people here, it, it makes it harder. It makes it it's a real good exercise. But I think that's a great pick. I think. GWS will be laughing all the way to the bank. And with that being said, Fremantle enter with Ian. Mm. And they've done well so far. Con Sanchez, you've you've got him in through the door. I think that's a great dub for Fremantle. What Fremantle yeah. got work to do at this stage. I think this is it's probably the looking at the draft board now, probably the frustrating thing for Frio is I was definitely looking for a couple of the guys to slide and hopefully find one. Like I would have really liked a, an Angus Hasty there to add to their defensive core, which definitely will help um, like a like a Hayden Young be able to play a lot more midfield time. And I know that Hasty does, even though he's 190, he tends to play a bit more run and gun rather than just your straight up interceptor. But I thought that would have worked really well. Unfortunately, he's not there, and there aren't any of the other players I had ahead. So I'm basically going with my sort of breaking case of emergency. This is the guy that would work well for Frio, and it lines up perfectly with what Damo's needs were, which is going a bit more mature here, and we're going to go for Sean Manor. Just in case anyone else takes him, because oh, uh, there's a chance I was going to let him slide to the end. But uh, I think, yeah, they they can definitely do with a bit more of a mature age player to fit into that bracket. Um, looking at the age profile, of the list there isn't really a lot in that sort of peak ages. You're sort of twenty three, twenty four to. 27. I don't think that's where the bulk of the list is there. Um, and just having a guy that is absolutely ready to go forward of the of the center, midfield and the forward line, it adds to that run. And yeah, it's an exciting player who starred in the VFL. Let's hope he can take that step up to the AFL. Mate, I, I love the pick. I love the pick. Like honestly, I rate it. I really rate that pick. I don't Dame, are you happy with that as a free old boy? Yeah, yep. He's following my notes perfectly. <laughs> I love it. Well, Brisbane are on the clock. Now, obviously, they are suspected to use this selection because yes. they haven't announced any rookie upgrades at the moment and they have no need to. So what is Brisbane doing here? They've got two picks in a row. Yeah, this will be their last selection. And um, again, I think... In real life, this might end up being a rookie selection, but for the sake of this draft, I'm going to take him. It's their academy player, Patrick Snell. He's a, a bit of a utility tall, predominantly defender, um, but I think he gives them a bit of flexibility behind Harris and long term behind Harris Andrews, you know, Ryan Lester, Darcy Gardner, that sort of type of player. Hey, I love it. I love the thing. And you said you were going to pass on this one, yeah? Yeah, we'll pass on the next pick. Okay, so West Coast. West Coast are on the clock. We will. I still have a team that hasn't made a pick yet, by the way. So <laughs> I'm just... Good old Port Adelaide. So West Coast are on the clock. Uh, it's Western Bulldogs, I believe, on the clock. Oh, sorry. That is... And... Yeah, Western Bulldogs. A few of the players that I wanted 
to be available for the Western Bulldogs are gone. Um, so I've kind of had to do a bit of a looking around while you guys have made your picks. And unfortunately, Fremantle aren't going to reunite the siblings and the Western Bulldogs are going to take Aiden O'Driscoll. Ooh, I do like that pick. I do. Uh, Double like... Dummy has said in chat, in that situation, would Brisbane trade their pick for a future pick and then use the following pick on Snell? Yes, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is. And it is worth noting, great co- co- comments here. Um, next year, they've got some great academy players. Check yeah, out another Fred Ashcroft Hurt. boy, don't they? They've mm. got Ashcroft, but also check out a guy called Tom Gillett. No one has talked about him, but what Ethan Reed can do, this guy can do probably better than he can. I wouldn't be surprised to see him massively rise. But that being said, Damo, for the sake of this, we'll say in the write up, when I write this up and put a post, Brisbane were clever. They, they got a bid on Patrick Stahl, but they traded the picks out. Um, yeah, something Eagles, like that. Yeah, yeah it, Eagles, they've got a lot of work to do. What what are the Eagles looking at here? Well, the, the Eagles wanted Lance Collard, didn't get him. They wanted – then then they wanted Phoenix Gothard, didn't get him. So Jack DeLeon was next on their list, didn't get him. <laughs> so the West Coast are going to select Jack Callanan. Good, Good Tassie boy. I feel like there's a lot of Kalanins from Tassie. We know I get upset. We know I love my Tassie boys as well. Uh, and the Giants will pass on their next pick. I tell you what, we, we, we do love it. We do love uh, a late selection. But the Giants, they're passing, are they? Yeah, they're passing. So that's just, I'm just making sure that he wasn't yet. So Jack Callanan isn't part of North's Academy. So that is good. Um, and you're passing. Okay, Ian. <laughs> I just realized Melbourne had a father son in this draft that we didn't take. Caught that, Callanan. <laughs> Get it, pick him up as a rookie. I'm sure it'll happen that way. Yeah. So we've got, we're getting right down mm. to the scrags. Ian. Yeah, Frio back on the clock, and yeah, there's again, as I said, there's this that kind of area of the draft where there really isn't anyone that's not expected to be picked up in this stage. Like, there's no one that's really slid that they can pounce on for me. Um, and I'm, I know I kind of did add a bit in the midfield with my last two picks, but I kind of like that they can play elsewhere. Sanchez can sort of start in that forward line. Mana can be a bit on that sort of half forward line. I'm going to continue to add to the midfield, and I'm going with a young star named Reese Torrent um, over there. He probably most likely would go as a, a rookie pick rather than the draft, but I don't know. He did really excite me in some of the national championship games. Um, I just think he's got that little bit of pace and spark. Like I really loved his work rate. He just always wants to be around the ball. And I feel like there's a bit of upside in someone like him to add to the, the young midfield that Frio is building. Mate, I, I like it. And he's staying local. He's staying local. We, that we way no one can we... leave, which has been an issue with, with Frio the last few years. So it's a, it's a big strategy. If I wasn't able to pair a few of them up, we're just, we're staying in WA. Right. I love it and get a nice peel, thunder vibe. Staying in WA, Damer. What don't West Coast need? They need a bit of everything, don't they? And I think they're going to head to South Australia and pick Kane McAuliffe. You know what I am enjoying as well? is He's a very good player as well, his old Kane, but I do love the pick. Uh, I do love the fact that Hawthorne's trade, he's looking better every pick. Um, mm-hmm. Double dummy. Shh. Shh. Uh, I, I've done Hawthorne a service here. Done Hawthorne a service. Uh, but no, I, I agree. Kane is a great pick. And we go back to Frio. And Frio, you've taken one, two, three. Yeah, you've still got this spot's galore. They haven't promoted anyone as of yet. So I'm correcting that, aren't I? They don't have yep. a list spot. I'm pretty sure that's them done, I believe. That's them done, isn't it? 
I'm I'm raring to go with this Port Adelaide pick, boys. I am raring to go. So you so so we'll pass on that. Half on are gonna do the right thing. We're taking big culture deer where I think there'll be probably a pick maybe just before. It'll be interesting. I, I, I could see Collingwood if someone takes Will Dawson or something like that, maybe bidding early, but in this thing. I'm bringing him here and half on join me and Nick Austin in the old Vic having a, pot, a beer. Um, obviously, Carlton are passing on that pick as well because we have no list spots. So we are nearly onto one sheet. How good is that? How good is that? So, um, Ian, Richmond. Do they still have a pick? I Just double checking. One, I two. think. I think only had the two i might be incorrect yeah, that. Just like that. i think they're done okay hey, port adelaide yeah. laugh at they they had pick 69 to start the draft it's coming to 53 who needs draft picks jesus don't say that someone might be watching from the faffle <laughs> i've i have been asked in the chat about pick nine so they are watching <laughs> So, Damo, Doggies. Uh, is, this, is this their last pick or have they already made four? Let's have a look. One, one, two, three. One, so this two. Is, okay, so three. this is their last pick. Yeah. Don't fuck me on this, Damo. Uh, a okay. draft is the they only look- thing in the world when the numbers get less, it gets harder to pick. Yeah, <laughs> I, f- I, f- I, I feel like I am going to fuck you on this, Lech Dog, because I, I think you're trying to pair someone up, but um, they jo- uh, the Western Bulldogs lost Jordan Sweet to Port Adelaide, <laughs> so they need a Ruckman for if. Tim English goes down, and I know they've got Rory Lobb and other players that can pinch hit in there, but they're going to select Vigo Vicentini. Oof. No, no, that's fine. I, I, I wasn't – he he was on the list, but that's all right. I'm a big fan of Vigo as well. He's, he's very – got great upside, especially when you've got such a young team. Someone to rest on, and he's probably smarter than the average bear. We do like the Sandy, but Leg Dog, Port Adelaide are finally here. About yeah, time. For no reason whatsoever as well. Gave them an extra pick because they need an extra list spot. Um, I remember saying that in my mock draft earlier. That's how the AFL work. Don't ever believe picks. They just hand them out sometimes. So you've got the benefit of two picks. Here's your yeah. first one. Well, there's, look, there's a player on my list, and now I'm a little worried he might have been taken about eight years ago. Um, so if I look like an idiot, let me know. Um, but is Will Patton still available? He is. I think that if you could get Will Patton at pick 53, he's an absolute bargain. He's a tall defender. He can play off half back. He's South Australian. I know they went and bought in Brandon Zerk Thatcher and um, Asaba Radigalia, but I tell you, if you can get him for free, Give him an A for the draft. Mate, I agree. I think it's a great pick. And I, I think a lot of people have got him linked. And Port Adelaide genuinely stay at home unless they can pair. And talking about people who treat the draft like an interstate club, Geelong. Geelong are very famous for pairing it up because Victorians are kind of weird and they think the 20-minute Uber from the CBD <laughs> means they're going interstate. <laughs> um, so, Ian, uh, are you worried about the flight risk of been 25 minutes up the road it's always a worry but we're able to always bring our boys home which is the good thing um here at geelong and yeah weird draft for them knowing that we've still got two picks left this late in the draft uh to pick up some talent and there is a host of ways i could go i don't think there's going to be many picks in between them to be honest so i'm really just gonna go who i believe is best available and it doesn't necessarily suit, I think, a, a main need for them. I, I think they do have a fair bit of probably run off the off the half back, but we're gonna go slightly more mature, barely a mature age player in Sam Closey, please. 
let's get close closer yeah makes sense just uh sam closey from the werribee vfl franchise damo you've passed haven't you on the gws one yep giants are done okay um collingwood are one and done they're stoked that this guy is here and we needed we need we needed uh, a key forward type player um I mean, in this draft, we are very, very stoked to see that K. Oh, of course, we lose Pommy as soon as he's oh, no, Pom. to build the suspense. This is incredible. I'm very suspended <laughs> right now. Pom, <laughs> who are you picking? Perfect way to pad for time. Just pretend you're frozen and then you can just slowly make your pick after that. I can't believe I didn't think of it. Can you hear me? We can now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we will. We, we, ideally, we wanted uh, a key forward, but we are going with our mid forward and play a bit oversized in Kade De La Rue from the Dandy Long Stingrays. Kade De La Rue. And that's Collingwood done. Collingwood are joining me, the GWS list manager, and everyone else for a pint. We're like, screw you guys, we're going home. Screw you guys, I'm going home. <laughs> I, I, Eagles. Think, I think this is West Coast's last pick because I think they're going to take five and I think they've already taken four. Um, this guy has kind of slid, not too far out of his range, but slid a little bit and West Coast would be stoked to have him available at their final selection and that's uh, Luke Lloyd. Mm. He, he he's been there. He's he, he's been touted in the the top forty in some people, but he, he's slid here. I love the pick. I love the pick. Um, we stay in the WA. Fremantle. Yeah, they, they're unfortunately they done. So we're we're going back to Geelong, and they were looking at uh, Luke Lloyd. They were hoping that they he he could fall. To us, but knowing there wasn't a lot of picks, there was basically two key forwards I kind of had on my list looking at that. Um, so that's why I ended up going closely basically to pair him with his brother down at Geelong. But we're going to stick with the mature age Geelong. We like him older. We don't want him too young. And so <laughs> we will go a man that I will completely botch his last name, but we're going to give it a go. It is Bailey Van Den Heuvel. And the Hoogle, yeah. Hey, should should be playing centre back for for <laughs> Holland. He just might do. Who knows? There's still a That's bit a of time good in this man's career. Name about that. Could be South African. Could be Dutch. We just don't know. But in some cases, you could argue the same thing. Um, Sydney, Damo, Sydney, Sydney, Sydney are done. How many picks have St Kilda made so far? Skilda, one, two, that was one, two, three, three. Okay, so we originally said that they were going to take three, but Sos said on Gettable this morning that they were going to take four. So um, I've kind of had to look at who's fallen through on my list for them. And... Best available comes from their own Sandringham Dragons, and that's Harvey Johnston. Mm, good pick. I like that. I do like Harvey Johnston's pick. I love it. Like Dog, Melbourne, you said you were done, weren't you? Melbourne are done. Geelong? I was just excited someone called me on. Geelong are well and truly done now. Oh, Port still have one pick to make. Oh, yeah. The last player in the draft will be Lachlan Charlson, uh, if he's still I available. Hoping, uh, I, I, small... I, I, hope, I, I was hoping you were going to say Lachlan O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He didn't quite make it. So I think that's just a nice little small forward that can develop um, 
they've lost a little bit of depth there. And to be honest, I don't like many of their small forwards, but they've got good forwards that pinch hit there. So uh, midfielders that pinch hit there. So anyway. Right. I I love it. But for those watching at home who've stuck around, like there's been over 110 from the start, which I think is insane. But mm. this is what we've got. Harley Reid went number one. Jed Walters, Colby Bekircher and Dan Curtin joined North Melbourne. Jed Walter obviously staying at home at the wonderful Gold Girl Sons. Um, then we had Zane Dersma because we had a trade. Melbourne and Hawthorne did a future swap and... Hawthorne benefited having two first next year. Zane Dursma found Melbourne. Saunders went to the Doggies. Hawthorne picked the Wizard Watson. GWS sticking with what they know, the medium sized key forward that is Nate Caddy. Geelong brought in Connor O'Sullivan and they won the race. Match bids for Ethan Reed and Jordan Croft because Essendon were mean. They got Darcy Wilson. Caleb Windsor went to Adelaide to add some there outside run. Colton Falstrup dropped Melbourne after Jake Rogers was bid on by Gold Coast. Will McCabe was matched by Hawthorne as North took James Leak with their pick swap. Charlie Edwards went to Saints and Riley Hardiman went to Adelaide. North then went Will Green and Archer Reed with a sandwich of Harry D. Mateus at GWS. Will Graham was subject to the Sydney bid, but Sydney then went crazy. They got Kostowski <laughs> and Caden Cleary from a bid from Collingwood. And then we just started going mental, really. This is probably the exciting part of the draft, isn't it, here? Because this was where really we were expecting the big teams to come in. Do you know what I mean? This is where the big teams come in, isn't it, really? And where a lot of clubs in here only have one pick or a lot of work to do. And you'd imagine Collingwood... Carlton and even the Eagles here will be really chuffed yeah, with their absolutely. selections. Mm. And that's well, how it could be it's... on draft night as well. There could be a lot, it could be sliders galore at, at these few picks. It, it's going to be incredibly interesting. And that's what happens on these nights. You, you, you take the sliders, all of a sudden, some guys go way too early and your whole draft board's out of whack. I love it. <laughs> Can we just talk about how perfect the AFL draft system is? That in a in a league with eighteen teams, the first round has gone out to pick twenty eight. <laughs> the in a league where you get one pick per position on the ladder of a, of eighteen teams, it's new math. Twenty eight is the first round. It's new. Well, you, you got to remember they just make stuff up. Not many, not many leagues are as good as the AFL that we just make rules. Most leagues would be like eighteen teams, oh, eighteen picks in the first round. You know what? Can we get one shock who's undrafted? Let's just take a look mm. as oh, you, yeah. you guys yeah. at home catch up on that board. The one that really did surprise me was this one, Charlie McCormick. Mm. I, I, I was thinking NGA, someone might bid. Someone might someone might oh, have yeah, a little yeah. bit of a bid. He'll still bid get in. drafted, obviously. I reckon that'll be a Category B dodgy Nick Madden deal. Yeah. They'll find a way to protect it for sure. Um, Anyone else? Yeah. Oh, there's um, there's probably a couple. I mean, one of my favourites. Did Luke that, get taken? Uh, yeah, he did end up going to West Coast. Um, yeah, probably the one that I really liked, but I just don't think there was a lot of need for him probably late in the draft is um, Nathan Philactides. I think he's got a lot of run and a lot of talent, and I think a, a lot of few others showed a bit more um probably ceiling but i don't know I, I think there's a nice play that someone will pick up on a on a rookie list mate i agree um joel frages did get picked up uh he got picked up it was just around here there you are uh, Skilder. St. Kilda. did uh will lorenz get taken he didn't no oakley charges boy is still here he's probably someone i, th I mm. thought would get taken late there is talk he's he, he's been offered a rookie deal. I did read that today because he's one of them guys. I, I agree with oh, Nathan. I, 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 yeah. I agree with Ian as well. Nathan is one of them. I think with this draft, though, how that went, and I suspect this because I feel like Ari Shawnmaker has got way too much hype. See Zane Dersmer, and you know it's overhyped because I overhyped Tasmanians, but the hype train has come hard for Ari late. I feel like if the draft goes like this where the halfback slid a bit, Mm. I feel like that'll go against players like Nathan. I, I feel like they'll be like, well, I can get a better player. And I, I feel like Nathan's relying on Hardeman Leak to go early. 
so mm. it filters down the need filters down where some of them teams that we had them taken got fortuitous fortuitous good word but will lorenz yeah probably a shot um i do I think he's been lucky. i do think they need to either address the rookie rules or bring back a mandated um selections at uh, minimum selections for for national draft because it just seems strange to me as much as i don't like the afl dictating to the clubs it seems strange to me that like obviously this is a mock but guys like lorenz wouldn't have been picked up like it feels like he should be drafted I feel like the solution to this is just making lists bigger for the sake of allowing guys to be on lists. It's why this, we're getting so many mature age players because clubs just don't take risks on anyone now. And that's why the rookie draft has turned to absolute bollocks because no one yeah. is taking the risks on these guys anymore. And yeah, I reckon if you just make, add, make bigger well, list spots, have as many as you want. Here's the salary cap. Have as many players on the list as you want and go for it. I feel like that would make things a lot more exciting, give kids bigger opportunity to play AFL. Or yeah, they could I'd do what the out. NFL or, or they could do what the NFL does and you just draft as many picks as you have and then the SSP mm. period finishes on what February 17th, you have to cut your list down to 44 players. You've got all these players training with you over the preseason. You'll know who you want on your final list. Well, they released rules about that today. You can only bring, for every list spot you have, you can only bring in two players to train. <laughs> it's just... You know, you know what I'd like to see? <laughs> a list, I'd like to see a list of 50 and six of them... Uh, do you remember the old days when the rookie draft, you weren't allowed to play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'd like six of them players have to play. Six of them players don't have to play. But because all state leagues, my camera's just gone again. Give it a sec. It'll reboot. But six, when they did that, and you have six that are just VFL. So people like Lorenz then, McCormick, I think would get drafted in the rookie mm. draft mm. because suddenly they can make their state side better. Yeah, I, I don't mind that. And equally, I do think we need a fix. Like Sam Reed, Ed Kerno, those sort of guys shouldn't be on a rookie list. I think that's also a fix. Mm. I think it should be the same rules as the, uh, I've always said this, the rookie, all rookie A should be the same rules as the rising star. If you played more than yeah, yeah. it I should literally it. be for mm. kids. Because I agree, because right now there is some clubs, like no offence to North, Liam Shields is on that list. That should be Will Lorenz. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Not, and not I, and a, have, bring back the veteran list if you really, really need it. Like, I, I don't mind that. I, I, I agree. I would say that that would be better than compensation picks for being shit. If you Absolutely. said, right, we're going to give you two over 30s, not on the salary cap, and then teams get Liam Shields in and got, yep. okay, this guy's going to mm. booster our experience, but we're not paying it. I've got to say, this round was my favourite that I'm going to show you on screen. Uh, for those who are Hawthorne fans, and I will post a list breakdown tomorrow morning of this when... I've got I've got weekend league on FIFA, so that'll be the priority tonight. But <laughs> I, I, I think this could happen, and we had that scenario where Hawthorne bid came in thirty eight mm. for Mitch Edwards. I've got a feeling Pom's big call thirty five to forty. If Mitch Edwards there, I can see teams trading up. I can see teams really trading up and. I could see teams being the winner of that, particularly teams like Brisbane who need points next year with pick 39. I can see that being the let's let, let's get out of jail. Let's get yeah. out of jail card. Equally, I could see them taking Mitch Edwards. Like I would have taken him if he was available. Mate, I, I, I agree. Um, Ra Magar is saying something about North Melbourne didn't take enough players. Six list spots. We did a trade, if you remember. Oh, true, 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 true. Mm. We, 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 we came up here. So North have got one, two, three, four, five. Do yes. you know what I mean? And, and they bought in something. Can't remember what. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And we brought in the picks. And then we will just do a rookie upgrade as per usual. <laughs> Yes, very good. So there was a few NGA players that didn't get picked up, but you'd assume most of them get rookied or completely ignored. 
Well, I mean, the new AFL rules are quite clear. Now you can add them to a category B, so they count as foreigners. So Charlie Nash <laughs> is an interesting one because uh, Carlton, there's rumours that Carlton are going to pair Patrick in the VFL contract. Charlie McCormack, I can see becoming a category B. Mm. Yeah, I think so. B- B- and yes, for sure, clarify, for sure. Why wouldn't you? To, clar- to clarify on the category as well, an interesting little update I've got for you on there, speaking to a couple of AFL list managers, that document I showed in my video is correct. Three category Bs are allowed to be listed. The rule is, if you get three category Bs, though, one of them must be off it within 12 months. So you know at the moment you can extend the category B. That mm-hmm. rule changes. that If you have three, it has to be two the next year. One of them has to either be delisted or taken onto oh, the other okay. list. Yep. So look out for that. But Ian, Demo, Let Dog, you guys have been superstars. Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. That was a lot of fun, that. It that was works. amazing, Pommy. Thanks for having me. But all the things will be check the put check the description. You'll have all the socials of all these three guys. Go and give them a share, give them a like. Um Obviously, let dogs with me 90% of the time, but go and check him out. He's well worth it. damo has got his own channel. Navy Blue Corner, they do wonderful work if you're a cow and fan. Thank you very much, everyone. Much love. God bless. And uh, we'll see you probably for a recap of the draft when we can mock how our mock draft went. Yeah, let's do it. Cheers, guys and girls. <laughs>